Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. And today I just wanted to talk to you and show you some of my results on the 9900K's thermal issues. Now, we all know that the 9900K has got a, so uh, a, a stem, it's a soldered thermal interface material. Um, and, you know, we were, we've been ranting and raving about bringing solder back. They did, but unfortunately the solder is not as good as it could be or as good as it was back in the days of Sandy Bridge. My 2500K, uh, which is now with my friend, uh, is still running strong and keeps very cool. Uh, granted, it doesn't have as many co cores and it doesn't clock as high. Um, that the, those chips uh, in the Sandy Bridge era uh, were really good, and we were hoping Intel would bring it back. Well, they brought it back, but not in the same quality as we would have hoped. As you can see here on the screen, I'm looking at the Intel specified website. Uh, 9900K, um, if you're living under a rock, is 14 nanometers. Uh, came out in Q4 of 2018. It's an 8 core, 16 thread CPU from Intel. Uh, it's max turbo frequency is 5 gigahertz, but that's only going to be on one core, uh, two cores, 4.8 gigahertz, all core boost of 4.7, but a base clock of 3.6. Uh, it's got 16 megabytes of cache, and it's rated at 95 watts. And if you haven't heard the issues with that and the reviews in the past, that should be been out for a while now. Um, it's not really 95 watts. Okay, so 95 watts. Uh, is specified but to make it run at those 95 watts you have to make some adjustments in your BIOS or on your motherboard uh, in order to hit that. Now uh, multi-core enhancement or MCE uh, you can disable it or enable it as you see fit in your BIOS but uh, if you don't have the thermal solution to keep this guy cool then you're gonna have problems. Now here and the real question is can the Corsair H100 V2 keep this CPU cool. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. So the K Corsair H100i V2, uh, according to popularity online, is basically the second most popular cooler out there. The first most popular is the Hyper 212 Evo, uh, but that's air. And then the Corsair H100i V2 is uh, obviously the most popular for liquid. Uh, that Maybe that might be more opinionated than factual, uh, but if you look at the uh, stats and, and what people commonly have, they're probably going to have the Corsair H100 uh, V2. Anyways, moving forward, uh, talking about Intel, the T-junction is 100, but if you're going to run your CPU at an all-core overclock of 5 gigahertz, you're going to go above that 100. So you're not going to be comfortable. On top of that, you better make sure you have a good motherboard like the uh, Oris um, Master uh, motherboard or a lot of the gigabyte boards or Oris boards are really good so if you're gonna have a motherboard like that you're golden but some of the other motherboards that say they can handle these type of CPUs especially the 9700K and the 9900K you might want to double check uh, they're still online on Amazon around 534 at least the 9900K is let's see how much the 9900K is um, so if that's correct, yep, 409, 534 for the, so these CPUs are not cheap. And for the thermal, face, the thermal interface to be kind of meh, uh, it's kind of disheartening in my, in my opinion. And you, Intel could have done a lot better uh, with it. Uh, I mean, we already saw the, the run up to the, these thermal issues with the 8700K. Those chips were hot as well. Uh, now that we've thrown more cores on it, it's kind of uh, a problematic. So. Um, I will have a link in the description for uh, Tom's Hardware's article here on the 9900K and uh, the temperatures they got. But I want to show you my temperatures. Um, now these are just idle temps, and this is this is normal. This is what we should see. So idle temps, you see here that uh, we're sitting where we should be, 32, 31. That's with an ambient temperature in my household of uh, around 74 Fahrenheit. Uh, so 29, it was the lowest. So that's average. And in the, the Corsair H100, I mean, the lowest temps, 27, 26. Corsair H100 V2 is, is perfectly capable. I mean, it was cool in my 7700K, deleted, no problems, hitting the same temperatures at idles.
but when we start doing tasks, that's when it gets different. Now the temperature you see on the right for the maximum is just in startup, right? So that 57, 54, 53, just that's just startup, loading normal tasks, all that stuff that we hit those temperatures. When we go into gaming, that's a completely different story. Now, if you look, um, and, and forgive me if I'm incorrect, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I remember this. Look, I want you to look, take note of the H100i V2 temps, and that's the liquid temps. All right. So the liquid temps maxed out at 45.8. Now, if you're getting up in this close to the 60s, uh, you're you're in trouble because you might be um, you might have an issue uh, called fermentation, or it might be fermentating. I can't say the word right. But you, you, wanna, you don't want to have liquid temps up that high. So if you're doing extended gaming, extended rendering, or anything like that on this chip, and your liquid cooler uh, and the liquid uh, temperatures are getting up there, you might want to consider another thermal solution. Really, if you're going to be running the 9900K, you want to run a 360 rad, or if you have custom liquid cooling, or if you plan on deleting the 9900K, all of those solutions would work. But you shouldn't have to. You're spending almost 600 bucks on this. Some of the people spent 600 bucks on this. I didn't spend 600 bucks, but some of the people spent almost 600 bucks on a CPU that, no matter what you do, is going to thermal, uh, you know, hit thermal limits. Now it doesn't throttle even when it gets up to 104 C. It doesn't throttle, but anything past that, you will bump into it trying to throttle itself. So you're not really getting the full performance. However, you're not going to see those temps during gaming. You're you're just not going to see those temps during gaming whatsoever. Uh, average temps during gaming. For me, highest 84C, um, but average somewhere anywhere between uh, 80C to 72C. Um, I haven't done a, a, an extensive review on the motherboard yet, but with the proper uh, undervolting, uh, which most uh, people won't know how to do, you can reduce the temperatures even more because these motherboards will. Um, will overvolt, especially uh, a few of them I, I believe and I uh, hate to say names but like Asus and MSI may overvolt. Now not maybe the Meg board but uh, ASRock has a problem with it and I, I have the ASRock Z390 Tachi and it's putting too much voltage in it. It could be a lot better um, and you could save yourself some some thermal issues by undervolting your CPU. Again you shouldn't have to but if you bump it into the thermal, thermal limit and you want 5 gigahertz on all cores you're gonna to have to look into another thermal solution, maybe deleting the CPU or what have you. Now, the 9900K, I seen it was pulling as many watts when it was overclocked, right? So I hit 5.2 gigahertz, and this H100i V2 could not, it could not keep up. It could not keep up. I was uh, getting into really, really bad temperatures, uh, 108, and I just, it was done. I was, I wasn't doing it. But 5 gigahertz, um, you'll spike up into the hundreds, maybe low hundreds, 102, 104. It'll come back down because it does fluctuate quite often unless you have it locked and you're on performance mode in your Windows or, or whatever computer you're on. So it's always locked at 5 gigahertz. Of course, adjust your LLC so it doesn't spike as much or ripple as much. Uh, but you're going to be bumping into thermal, thermal issues. Uh, but gaming, you're not going to have any issues. If you're just a gamer, 9900K would do just fine if you can afford it, um, especially with the H100 V2. But if you're trying to do an intense render, heavy benchmarking, anything like that, you're going to bump into issues. Now, Tom's Hardware here, um, they said the package temperature is measured at 160 watts, and this is the 8700K versus the 9900K. But see, this is for... This is when the CPU, or they were using a chiller, so they were keeping the water temperature at a constant 20 C with an industrial chiller. So this is a this is not extreme overclocking, but this is this is this is not what the average consumer or average person would do for keeping their CPU cool. And even with a 360 rad, some people hit 100 100 C. Now I'm going to put that to the test in the future and I'll explain that here in a minute but let me jump over to tech spot which I also will have linked in the description below uh, look how many watts they were pulling 255 I was pulling 255 or 250 watts with my 2080 a graphics card my RTX 2080 from Asus 
was pulling around 250 watts and now the CPU is doing that too. We were pulling some serious wattage and I know Threadripper is nothing new. We've seen this wattage before, yada, 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 but this is this is new to what I would call the mainstream space. Uh, of course, we got um, you know the enthusiast space with the uh, X299 and Threadripper, but for the mainstream, this is the first time that uh, we, we've seen a CPU not being heavily overclocked or not extreme liquid cooling and hitting these type of power draws. That's why I said you got to check your BIOS, make sure there's certain features that aren't automatically enabled because motherboard vendors will do that just to uh, mislead. And then you want to check your settings, maybe undervolt a little bit to try to save or uh, minimize the amount of thermal um, resistance you're getting at the, at the top end there. Um, now, the performance is there. The 9900K performance is, is, is good. Uh, 8700K got up to 5.2 gigahertz. Now I can get to 5.2, but I can't control the temperature. That's the problem. And the only way that I'm personally going to be able to control the temperature is if I delit or do something else extreme to do so, but the average consumer, again, will not do it. Uh, the temperatures I, for even TechSpot and, and many others were able to hit 100 uh, during a prolonged stress test. Again, like I said, I was hitting 104. Um, and uh, that's with the 104, 106, and that's with the H1, you know, H100 I, uh, IV2 uh, cooling it at 5 gigahertz. Um, even with a 360 rad, I feel that I'm still going to be close to that temperature. Now, at stock, the H100 V2, perfect. You can game on it. You can render on it. You're going to see temps maybe get into the high 80s, come back down you'll be fine. So the H100 IV2, the answer to the, the question is yes, it can cool the 9900K, but if you want that five gigahertz overclock uh, for the maximum performance, you're not gonna be able to sustain those temperatures. Uh, you're really gonna be putting your fans to a lot of work because if, if you're like me, you have your fans on a curve, your case fans, so that way when the temperature rises, CPU gets on a heavy load, the fans will kick on and, and level it out, but temperatures are going to be really hard. Now, here's the Noctua NHD15, and um, Corsair H100i Pro, and then 360 rad. Look at the 360 rad, even at 5 gigahertz, 89. At 5 gigahertz for the H100i, and that's the Pro, not the V2. Uh, they hit 100 C, so about where I'm at, so um, 102, 104, 100 C. And then the Noctua NHD15 at 5 gigahertz was also getting 100. So the cooling can sustain the 9900K. You're not going to kill your CPU at these temperatures, but that is not comfortable. It, that's not a comfortable area. So you want to get your CPU as far away as you can. Uh, for the best bang for the buck, if, if your air cooler, if you don't get a Noctua or something, uh, substantial a good air cooler then go with liquid and the answer to this video is yes it can handle it but you won't be able to overclock and the whole point of you getting an unlocked CPU is to what overclock so Intel their stem or uh, soldered thermal interface material is not exactly uh, up to par um, but with some tweaks you can make it work. Now the average consumer, you're fine. You know, don't don't overclock anything. If you're not an overclocker, you don't know it, you're fine. Plug it in, get your parts built, or get your parts, you know, sent in, put it together, leave it at stock, you'll be good to go. But get yourself a good motherboard at least. Don't get yourself uh, a motherboard that the VRMs can't handle it. And there's uh, plenty of uh, information out there. If you don't if you don't know where to go, go check out Buildzoid at actually um actually hardcore overclocking um, I'll put a link to his uh, channel in my description because he'll give you a list of good boards uh, for the Z390 platform uh, and it's pretty much you know set it and forget it if you get good cooling you put it together um, and you just let it ride out especially with the the Oris Master then you'll be fine voltages will be fine uh, you'll still overclock to 5 gigahertz on a single core 4.7 all core and your temperatures will still be in check uh, it may, uncomfortable for my taste, but it would still be in check. And then for the enthusiast overclocker, 
uh, you it can handle it just fine. This cooler can handle it just fine, but for sustained long duration, I would not recommend it. So basically, I wouldn't be running five gigahertz all core 24/7, 365 with the H100 IV2. I would use it for a benchmark, uh, maybe a competition on hardware bot, uh, maybe gaming for a little bit, but then I would clock it back to stock or bring it back to stock as soon as I'm done. But I just wanted to let you guys know I will be coming out with another video in the future where I will be testing out the Corsair uh, H150 uh, Pro, the 360 uh, Rad from Corsair with the new uh, Asetek 6th uh, gen pump. So I will let you know my results. Uh, right now the goal is to beat um, 85, 88C on this CPU during gaming and then during heavy workloads it seems or rendering or overclocked to 5.1 or 5.2 it looks like I'm not going to be able to get much out of that uh, 360 rad that I, if I really want to go that route and and get temperatures uh, below the hundreds that I'm either going to have to delid uh, lap to IHS which I do plan on doing in the future uh, video is lapping the IHS delid will be coming uh, a last resort and then um, last but not least custom custom water cooled loop um, but I want to do that. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that right. So uh, stay tuned for that content if you're interested. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and comment below. Uh, let me know what you think about the 9900K and the Intel launch. Uh, the CPU is overpriced. Uh, Intel did a poor job on the solder, but people are still buying it, and it is still a good performer. So we'll see how things turn out. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.